welcome to a real conversation in English between two native English speakers. I'm Liz Wade, and this is Adam Navis. Hi, Hello. Adam. Hello, Liz. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Um, and we are going to talk about one of our recent Spotlight programs, this week's program, Bonhoeffer, Making Difficult Choices. If you have not listened to that program or seen it on YouTube yet, you can find a link in the description. And actually, while you're looking down in the description, make sure that you notice that join button to become a member of our channel so that you can get extra perks, uh, including PDFs of scripts. That's a very difficult word to say, PDFs. <laughs> PDFs. Uh, <laughs> And so, um, and other uh, exclusive member videos and all sorts of great things like that. Um, and while you're there as well, click that little subscribe button if you haven't already, and then click the bell to always get a notification when there's a new video, because we have a lot of good stuff, uh, I think, and uh, we don't want you to miss any of it. If you are uh, listening on Spreaker, you can also find that link, listen to that program, and then, uh, yeah, have your say in our conversation by posting a comment on Facebook or sending us a, uh, an email or visiting our website at www.spotlightenglish.com. Any of those methods to get in touch with us and join this conversation because we really do love to hear what you have to say. And I think this program especially is a great opportunity for you to share your opinions because it is about ethical choices which is always an interesting topic to me. Uh, we can put out, we can um, imagine what we would do in situations that uh, we learn about. And so this one, Adam, yeah. you wrote this program. I did. I was fascinated by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, which is the- Yeah, I was uh, actually, I was gonna ask two questions of you. Oh, okay. First, what made you write this program? And uh, if you could tell us a little bit about it. So you've already started. So you go for it. So Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a German theologian and a pastor living in um, uh, in Germany during mm -hmm. the 1930s, 40s, when there were when there were Nazis. And right. what was fascinating about him is he actually came to the United States and studied some of the nonviolent. Um, actions that were going on in the United States to, to change some of the society uh, where we are. Decided it was more important to go back and to fight against what he saw as evil and hateful, and I think most of the world agrees now it was, um, but also how those beliefs went up against reality. And how he, his life story, actually, um, he got involved in a plot to assassinate Hitler. A failed plot, but a plot nonetheless. And he yeah. eventually um, was caught and imprisoned and killed uh, for those plans. But he thought it's still a good thing to kill one person. Because was, yeah, and so of course we we hear that, and we it's very easy when your life is not being threatened, or when other people's lives are not yeah. being threatened, to say, "Well, I would never, I that would it's never good to kill somebody." Yeah, well, this question, or the, sorry, this program begins with a shocking question, like, "Would you ever kill someone?" Yeah, and of course, uh, all people hopefully are going to say no. I would never kill someone. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, you learn a little bit more of the situation. And uh, the, the question, I think, that ethical question of the program is, would you save or sorry, would you kill one person to save millions? And, uh, and it's right. actually not it's not a guarantee. Right. Um, mm -hmm. If he had killed Hitler, maybe someone else would have would have um, stepped into his place. Maybe it would have been worse. Who knows? Yeah. Right. Um, but that question, what do you do uh, 
what is the good choice, right? right? What is the ethical choice? So I think I think that's uh, that's really interesting. I think it's a good idea to set the scene a little bit to to think about what what sort of situation he was in there. So uh, uh, the the Nazi Party was rising to power, right? So they were gaining mm-hmm. more more power in Germany, um, and there were there were German people who said that what they were doing was wrong, and they you know they did work against the Nazis. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that I think really hit Bonhoeffer. Or Bonhoeffer, he's a it's a German name, so it's really difficult for us to say. Um, one of those things that really affected his life was that the uh, he was a person in the church who mm-hmm. was a leader, right? He was a pastor, right? Yeah. Yeah, and so the the Nazi Party said that that any church that wasn't a nationalist church yeah. was illegal. Uh, And so uh, I think that's really what started to me in this story, what makes it seem like when he really started saying, wait a minute, that is not what I believe about being a Christian. Right. Yeah, he was he was a big he took what what many of Jesus's well, all of Jesus's teachings very seriously. And there is a series of programs or a series of teachings in the Bible called the Beatitudes, which are uh, yeah. a series of blessings for people who are poor and who are troubled and are, um, I'm going to say put upon, but there must be a better way of yeah, who are, who, um, who are downtrodden, op- uh, oppressed. Oppressed, and, yeah, yeah, good one. Um, and so he took those seriously and said, you know, we need to care about these people who are being hurt. Like, um, there are a lot of stories in the Bible about uh, Jesus' teachings in the Bible about like caring for your neighbor and taking that very seriously. And, um, and he really uh, felt like he had to act. And he, even when he was eventually killed, he, he was, he was willing to act knowing that if he got caught, he, he understood that what would happen. And he accepted right. that. He accepted because of that, course, uh, that was a super dangerous thing that he was doing, right? right? Uh, plotting to assassinate a country's leader. Yeah. And I think it's really easy for us to say, well, Hitler was a bad person, so Bonhoeffer was a good person. However, right. there are plenty of times where we judge situations like, I can't believe that person tried to kill that world leader because they're just values, their way of seeing, but they thought they were doing what they were supposed to do. So it's, it's not, it's really hard to get into the mind of someone who is still a person, right? Like what, what could they be thinking that I could relate to, even though I don't understand um, why they would do that? Right. Um, there is like a famous, uh, I will say like quote unquote ethical question um, about like, would you go back in time if you could? And this is like silly, right? This yeah. is a sillier thing. But And, and like uh, kill Hitler as a baby, like before he even ran game to power. Yeah. And you can say that about like any any um, terrible leader yeah, yeah. figure who ends right? up killing hundreds of thousands or even millions right of people. exactly um like if you could prevent a genocide by uh by killing this person as a baby uh i think that's something for our li- our listeners and watchers to put yeah. in the comments would you go yeah. would you if you could well, yeah what would you do if you could see adam uh, some of our listeners might know if they have watched or listened for a very long time that I am a huge sci-fi fan. I thought I'm you were going to go somewhere with this. <laughs> and um, I think that I have seen enough science fiction to know that when you go back in the timeline, never you only well. mess things it up. It never goes well. You don't make things better. So, um... Yeah, I don't, I personally, 
uh, probably would not go back and kill baby Hitler. Uh, even, uh, yeah. I don't think I could even, kill a baby. Teenage yeah, Hitler. Well, I yeah, would... it's, yeah. What a crazy conversation we're having right now. I know. It's a little odd. <laughs> We apologize to anyone who wanted to come to here and hear a pleasant conversation about pizza, ice cream, or sport. And instead, this is what you got. But, so getting back to this science fiction, going back in time never works. Um, but what I do think... Uh, but that's just, those... that's just TV science fiction. Actual time travel could go well. <laughs> yeah. But I think the point, because science fiction usually has a point that is applicable for us in our current situation, mm -hmm. even without time traveling devices, right? And uh, I think it just means that we have a lot of work to do here, yeah. right? To um, to make our world a better place where we are now and to continue to make the best decisions that we can. Um, and I, I think, I hadn't thought about this before this conversation, but uh, part of what we are doing to try and make this world a better place is the uh, 10 Ways to Fight Hate series. Exactly. And I think that is actually a really good sort of companion or partner to this program. Um, well, maybe, maybe the question of what you would do if you were Bonhoeffer isn't something that you know how to answer, but going forward and making the world a better place. That is something that we can do um, and we can learn more about it. And uh, we have 10 programs all about it. Well, not 10 yet, but they're coming. Um, and so I think that is hopefully a helpful thing for uh, our listeners and yeah, for everybody, for me to think about, for you to think about. Yeah, and I hope we're I hope we're never in a situation where we have to kill anyone. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's end on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you have gotten this far in this conversation um, about some very uh, weird and um, I don't know things that make me feel uneasy, uh, kudos <sighs> to you. Good job. Good job. Uh, if you would like to learn more about membership, again, push that join button that's right under this video or follow the link if you're listening to this as a podcast. Uh, we hope that you can uh, subscribe, that you have, that you constantly download our podcast. We think it's great. Um, and that you can check out our website, spotlightenglish.com. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think about this program, what you would do in an ethical situation. And uh, until next time, listen, watch, practice, learn. Spotlight out.